this is really the future of New Zealand. These, these narratives and these stories are, are what contribute to a future New Zealand. So I think it would be, um, it would be silly not to tell these stories and not to really delve into the depth of them. So I was raised in Goa, in the south of India, so that's on the western coast of India. And I'm Tamil and Gujarati as well. But both my parents were raised in Madras, where I was born. So it's a bit of a long story, but I was eventually raised in Goa from the time I've been a year old, pretty much. When I was 21, I'd been, I'd been sort of quite disillusioned with this whole modeling industry and acting and things like this in Bombay. I was a student, I was studying advertising in Bombay and I'd moved from there to the mountains in India, to Dharamshala. And I got into um, working with a refugee settlement agency there. So, you know, you're naturally exposed to a lot of stories from around the world, particularly Tibet, where we had a, you know, a large exodus of Tibetans coming to settle in Dharamshala over decades, really. Um, and I'd, I'd sort of become curious about that story and started doing a bit of research. And that's what kind of took me to China as well, to live and work and teach. So when I came here, I was 25. I came here as a student. So I thought I'd come and study for a year and a half and probably leave after. But after I finished my film and television um, postgrad diploma here, I decided I well, may as well just stay and stick around and see what the country has to offer. So, yeah. And of course, you know, growing up in a, in a family that, that was always curious about the world and reading and listening to a lot of music from around the world, I was naturally inclined to pick up influences from all across and New Zealand just happened to be one of them really. There's a lot about different parts of the world that interest me and I, I think I'm the kind of person that could really be anywhere and be mm. immediately curious about what's around me and find find that quite sustainable for quite, amount of, quite an amount of time and I think that's what happened with me in New Zealand but the more I worked here and the more deeper I delved into New Zealand life and stories through, through the virtue of my work I realized that there was more than one reason to want to stay here. Mm. But I'd already had family that had moved here, an aunt and an uncle, so mm. I'd sort of, you know, become a little familiar with the country. But I'd say one of the first, one of the first ways in which I got exposed to New Zealand was through the Bone People, mm. as, as stereotypical as it may be, but <laughs> look, it's a fantastic book, so I can't deny that really. One of my sort of pet projects has been Colombia now. So I've been very interested in Colombian music and Colombian culture for a while, for many years. And when I finally went last year to, to do this series of photos and um, interviews with a few artists there, that again for me was one of my, I'd say easily one of my most favorite work slash travel experiences. I called it the Pueblo de Tambores, so images and sounds from Afro-Colombia, and the idea was to, to, to show a side of Colombia that not a lot of people know of, which is the Pacific Coast, which is the Afro-Colombian part of Colombia, in terms of the music and the culture and the stories that, that emerged from that part of the country. And it was yeah, it was an interesting experience putting it all together from the photographs to the videos to actually doing the interviews themselves. I think there'd always been a common thread in terms of all the things that I'd been interested in and the, the, the sort of dreams I'd had as a teenager. Sure, they varied between being, you know, someone that was interested in fashion to films and television and documentaries. So it was quite a broad range, but I think there was always a common thread in terms of it all started with the curiosity of wanting to know a story or what sort of lies behind a certain story. So I think there'd always been a common thread and I don't think getting into the industry was as easy as I'd imagined it to be. You know, you come to New Zealand with these grand dreams of thinking, oh, I'm going to get into film and television and I'm going to live out my dreams in this new country and I'm qualified and all of these things. So although I'd studied it in New Zealand, I'd worked in the industry in India, getting my foot into the door for filmmaking or television or the documentary scene in New Zealand was a huge challenge and I think um, the idea of you know working as an intern, an unpaid intern or working on set for nothing and essentially making sandwiches and coffee to just be exposed to people in the industry and make contacts and prove your dedication to your work and all of that was kind of a rite of passage really mm. and um, 
It was only after a few years after having studied it and formalized my interest mm. uh, that I could actually get a job in the industry in New Zealand mm. in terms of being a reporter on television. I've had a lot of good experiences through Voices and here now this is really the future of New Zealand. These, these narratives and these stories are, are what contribute to a future New Zealand. So I think it would, be, um, it would be silly not to tell these stories and not to really delve into the depth of them. I'm always hungry for that. I'm always hungry to, to see more and tell more and experience more. And I think it's, it's a hunger that I've always, I've always felt. Yeah, and I think those that know me really well, they don't see any of this as a departure from, you know, the, the person that I actually am, so. Is there any story you feel like you're just waiting to tell? Maybe my own one day. Yeah, possibly. I'd like to.